does it follow that you actually will enjoy a recording session more where you have relative much privacy? Much more, much more. You do enjoy that? Oh, yes. Well, you know, in, in my teens, I uh, was going to school, and I played almost not at all in public. My uh, only performances, really, for many years, were uh, performances on the CBC, who were extremely good to me. And... Um, I got so used to working with a microphone that the microphone, instead of becoming an enemy, as it does for many people, it became a friend. I really think that, that this uh, is, is not so common because I know most people um, fear and, and detest the microphone. And it's, very un it's most unfortunate because when you get to um, feel at ease with it, it becomes the most relaxed and intimate medium there is. Recording is a, is a wonderful joy to me because it's the closest thing to recreation that we have. Really. Uh -huh. Yet actually, uh, it has its own strains, though, surely, that you haven't got complete control of the environment, and you don't No, but get when the... do you have in life? Well, true, but in the concert hall, it's always seemed to me that, that um, well, this is perhaps influenced by thinking about the theater, that the, the audience conditions, the, the, it sets the emotional climate, and it can inspire the performance in some way or other. I don't know, does this apply to music? It certainly does to the It actor. does, it does, uh... <clears throat> Uh, to most people, apparently, to most performers that I know. And, um, I mean, you cannot disagree with them because they feel it as strongly as I feel the other way. But for me, the, the audience inhibits the performance to, a, to an extent, not to a serious degree, but to an extent that, that can, uh, if you work at it, be overcome. I'm speaking now, you know, entirely mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. But uh, the recording, on the other hand, does nothing of the kind because you are alone in the studio. There are no external things to be considered. You don't have to think in terms of meeting somebody's particular likes and dislikes and demands. Uh, you, you can only meet your own. Um, and then the playback aspect of recording is a very satisfying thing too because you can, you can listen to many different variants of the same thing and, and find the closest thing to the ideal, never the ideal, but the, the closest to it that you are able to achieve at that particular moment in your life. And when it is released, unless there are some particular reason for it, it ought to be as close as possible to um, what you would ideally like to do, mm -hmm. you know. It does happen that in concert you, for some reason or other, will get a better performance than anything you've done on recording, uh, but I don't think that's attributable to the audience. It just happens that maybe you know it a little better by then. Yeah, yeah. Can you remember the first concert you ever went to? Yeah, I can, I think. Uh, it was Hoffman. I was about six years old, and uh, it was, I think, his last performance in Toronto. And it was a it was a staggering impression, really. Um, the only thing I can really remember is that when I was being brought home in the car, I was falling asleep, and I was in that this wonderful state of of uh, half awakeness in which you heard all sorts of incredible sounds going through your mind, and they were all orchestral sounds. But I was playing them all, and I suddenly was Hoffman. You know, I was mm -hmm. encountered, and um, this was a, something I'll never forget. Had you any idea at the time that you would be a concert pianist? No, I don't think so. You hadn't thought of it? Uh... And, well, not in terms of that aspect of the business. I, I was already playing the piano and, and uh, loving it, but it was just for myself, you know. Uh -huh. Who were your musical idols? Your, uh, I'm speaking of performers now. Well, when I was in my teens, which is the time when one has idols, I guess, um, I really only had one. Uh, I'm not speaking of performers, and that was Schnabel, on whose Beethoven and to a lesser extent Schubert and Brahms, I was brought up. His recordings or Oh, the recordings, yes, I never heard him in public. You didn't hear him? Never. No. What was it about Schnabel particularly that attracted you? Well, I think in part it was the idea that um, Schnabel seemed to be a person who didn't uh, really care very much about the piano as an instrument. The piano was a means to an end for him, and the end was to approach Beethoven. And um, I can remember when I was about 12 or 13, I began to learn the G major Beethoven concerto, which was the first piano concerto I ever learned and the first one I ever played. And I started to ape Schnabel's recording to such a uh, degree that I think it was finally taken away from me by my teacher for a, a month of thinking about my failures because I was pulling Tempe around in the most incredible rubatos. I mean, outdoing Schnabel by about two to one in every case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's an enormous temptation, particularly when you have recordings and can play them over and over again to, mm. to actually mimic somebody rather than to study them. 
well, yes, I mean, at, at that age, I think it's a temptation for everyone. But at the same time, I think it's a, it's a marvelous thing that, uh, well, in, 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 uh, in my teens, it certainly there weren't by any means as many recordings of things on the market as there are today, but I think it's a marvelous thing that children mm -hmm. can have this. How old were you when you played this Beethoven concerto? I was 12 or 13. When did you actually start uh, studying piano? Oh, I was playing when I was about three or four, but uh, just diddling away, really. And uh, I didn't become very serious about it, I think, until I was perhaps 10 or 11 when I really began to work. With, at that time, I would say, with the idea of a career, rather vaguely. Had you always uh, been able to read music? Well, I learned very young. I learned when I was perhaps three or four, you know. I, I could read music before I could read uh, words. And uh, when you actually started, um, wh uh, what had you in mind? Was it just the ordinary training that a child goes through, or did you actually have serious intentions? Well, I don't think that, that um, at that time I had a very clear idea of what a career in music involved. You know, I don't think that uh, students usually do. In fact, um, to their misfortune, students, by the time they graduate, still don't have a very clear idea of what it involves. I, I think that, that it was an extraordinarily glamorous aura surrounded the whole thing in my school, my early school days, my grade school days, because um, for one thing, it was something to uh, sit and think about when I was bored with the teacher, you know, as I always was. <laughs> and um, it uh, also was a, a wonderful escape from my fellow students, whom I always was getting in wrong with. And um, I think those were the things that music conjured for me much more than what it meant for the future. Mm. It sort of was uh, an endless continuation of that kind of event or escape. Did you enjoy practicing? Yes, because uh, probably for those same reasons. I don't think I enjoyed the physical labor of it any more than, than the next fellow. Mm. But I, I think, again, it had, it had somewhat more suspect roots. <laughs> had there been music in your family? Um, well, not professionally for about three generations. Uh, our one claim to fame musically is that Edvard Grieg was a first cousin of mother's grandfather. A good lineage. Well, unfortunately, I don't like his piano concerto because if I did, it would be the publicity stunt of the century. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what you played at your first concert? Um, your first recital? On the piano? Yeah. Well, my first concert with orchestra was, uh, as I mentioned before, the G Major Beethoven Concerto. That I can very much easily remember. Uh, the first recital is a you know, difficult problem. How uh, old were you at the time? I was, well, the first, uh, first complete recital. I took part in many other recitals with other young students, but I think the first recital was when I was about 14. Yes, I think I played um, uh, a brace of Bach fugues and some Haydn, some Beethoven, some Chopin, some Mendelssohn, some Liszt. Which you haven't played since in public. <laughs> Which I haven't played since in public. <laughs> Were you nervous? Um, oh, not nearly as nervous then as I am today. Really? Oh, no. Why? No. Well, you know, it was, it was all part of the game. One sort of, uh, the audience was largely filled with my schoolmates anyway. You would heard me do the same thing at the auditorium, you know? <laughs> and first period every Friday morning kind of thing. Yeah. And... Um, after all, if I could get through it there, there's no reason I couldn't have got through it again. Uh, no, the, in, in those days, I mean, one is sort of blissfully unaware of the responsibility that this thing entailed. I just wish I could feel like that again. <laughs> now you have to accomplish the same thing by sedatives. <laughs>